And here with us is Branislav Gerazo. We had already the opportunity during the day to hear for interesting questions coming from him. So welcome. Thanks. Uh, yeah. Thanks, Len. And I'm still thank here. You. <laughs> you finished yeah. the paper. You finished the paper. You know, we're uh, I finished the presentation. Yeah, OK. I, I hope to finish the paper by the end of the session. <laughs> yeah, OK. <laughs> Okay, so thanks for organizing this wonderful event. It's a nice uh, forum for uh, us like-minded uh, researchers and uh, engineers and people of all uh, fields to kind of um, come together and uh, present uh, our experiences and discuss maybe uh, some future directions of the application of uh, free software, both in education and uh, in industry as well as as well as in society as we heard today um my i would like to contribute with uh, my two cents on um, the the available free software in speech technology so um, uh, i will shortly um, speak about what is speech technology and who is speech technology important for and then i will go on to list uh, different free software available for uh, for three main uh, fields of speech technology speech synthesis recognition and uh, speaker recognition uh, so who am i um, that's a very important question uh, i am an associate professor at the institute of electronics here in uh, skopje i teach electroacoustics digital audio processing and biomedical electronics uh, my expertise is signal processing and i do machine learning and deep learning as well uh, but my main field of interest is speech, uh, speech recognition, speech synthesis. I've done speaker recognition as well. Um, so I'm the head of the speech group here at FAITH, and I'm a member of the DEEP team, which are two research teams that um, deal with uh, speech and uh, signal processing uh, of multimedia signals. So what is speech technology? I used the quote from Wikipedia. Uh, speech technology relates to the technologies designed to duplicate and respond to the human voice. Um, it will be more clear, I think, if we list the different fields of uh, research, um, speech synthesis, so the, the conversion from text to speech, basically, uh, speech recognition, the reverse process from speech to text, uh, then speaker recognition, which is recognizing a speaker's voice, uh, either from a closed set or from an open set, uh, speaker verification, also recognizing that that is the indeed the speaker who he claims to be, um, speech encoding for uh, speech transmission and uh, multimodal interaction. This is for uh, speech synthesis accompanied with um, gestures uh, and body language case, facial expression and so on. Okay, um, so what does speech technology, what is speech technology? What does speech technology allow? Um, it basically allows speech-based communication with electronic devices and this is the most natural way we can interact with uh, our technology surroundings. Um, it also allows conversion of speech to other forms of information and uh, vice versa from other forms of information to speech. And what is, uh, what can be, uh, what forms can this information be in? Uh, as an example, it can be text, so text to speech and speech to text, images, uh, images to speech, for example, um, actions and movements, and uh, as well as neural activity. This is kind of a sci-fi area, but recently there were uh, results in, uh, in Chang's lab in uh, San Francisco. Um, they synthesized speech based on uh, EEG, on electroencephalography, on electroencephalographic signals from the brain of, um, of uh, patients. Uh, who is it important for? Well, uh, it's important for everybody because uh, speech uh, can improve our daily interaction with uh, technology and we have more and more technology around us. So some examples include uh, handling a mobile phone while driving. Uh, so you don't have to take the eye, your eyes away from the, from the uh, windscreen. Um, then handling smart devices in the household. Uh, you know, you can talk to the, to the new smart houses and uh, interaction with virtual assistants. So uh, Alexa, um, uh, Google, Google, 
what was uh, Siri, uh, Cortana for Microsoft, and so on. Um, also, synthesis allows uh, the translation of textual content into speech, and uh, it can be used to generate audiobooks. For example, if, uh, if you prefer to listen to, to books uh, instead of reading them, if you listen to audiobooks like when you travel, for example, then uh, with speech synthesis, you can synthesize any book into an audio form. Uh, you can use speech synthesis to hear the news or kind of uh, listen to it from the internet web portals, uh, have it read your email and so on. Um, but there is also one group of people for which uh, speech technology is uh, indispensable. Um, so, uh, and this is, uh, this is the people with disabilities. So for the blind and visually impaired, uh, the screen readers are um, one of the best technologies, if not the best technology that allows them to use the computers and smart devices. Um, so basically allows uh, digital inclusion of, of uh, these groups. Um, also assistive communication devices, which are powered by speech synthesis, uh, give voice uh, to the deaf and dumb, and as well to the speech impaired. So uh, people with uh, <clears throat> some um, vocal apparatus uh, damage or motor control uh, illnesses, uh, autistic children, for example, and, uh, and so on. And um, also uh, another thing where speech technology can help is uh, sign language. So uh, sign language communicators basically can convert incoming speech into sign language or uh, text from websites into sign language so the deaf can understand it uh, easily. Okay, so uh, I'm going now to free software. Uh, I'll mainly concentrate on these three areas because these are the areas that I have uh, experience in. Uh, I will start off with synthesis. So there are uh, different paradigms in, uh, in speech synthesis, the articulatory synthesis, the formant synthesis, the concatenative synthesis, and recently parametric synthesis and deep learning based synthesis. Okay, that's a lot of synthesis for one slide. Um, and um, if you're wondering, is there enough free software that allows you to do speech synthesis? Uh, well, um, free software has been there for the whole uh, time of development of uh, speech technology, and uh, especially now uh, in this slide, speech synthesis. So there is free software available for uh, four out of five of these paradigms in, uh, in speech synthesis. Uh, I will just mention a few now because uh, it's, it's uh, endless, especially with the newer newer paradigms. So for the articulatory synthesis, there's this software called the Vocal Track Lab. It's uh, made by Peter Bir Birkholz from the uh, Technische University of Dresden. Um, and recently I I've been um, uh, working on a project uh, with him. So we are both part of a consortium and uh, I, will, uh, I was suggesting that uh, the, the project transition to GitHub. So it transitioned to, uh, to uh, this type of uh, community development. And uh, it's recently put on GitHub, and uh, I hope that uh, the community will continue, uh, will help in its improvement and uh, future, future upgrades. Um, then we can talk about concatenative synthesis, which is basically synthesis uh, where you have segments of speech recordings, and then you put them together to make a new sentence based on text. And this is a kind of a, an old approach, but very easy approach. And uh, most uh, commercial systems were using this kind of synthesis until recently. So until five years ago, let's say. Um, so there were a lot of uh, free software systems that uh, allow you to do concatenative synthesis. Embrola is one of them. It's a different speech synthesis, a bit archaic today, uh, but it's on GitHub and uh, it's still still there. You can, uh, you can work with it, you can update it and uh, et cetera. Uh, and there is the festival speech synthesis system, which is a uh, unit selection. So a bit more advanced than Embrola. It's basically uh, kind of uh, in, uh, in line with the commercial systems, which were also unit based, uh, but it also supports HTS and I will come to HTS in a bit. Okay, um, the parametric synthesis is basically uh, synthesis based on uh, hidden Markov models. And uh, this is HTS that uh, I mentioned uh, just now. HTS is a um, um, 
basically a HMM speech synthesis system. Uh, it's built on top of uh, an H HMM toolkit called HTK. And this is something used for ASR. We will see this in the ASR part. Um, and it's still uh, active today. Uh, in fact, uh, RH Voice, which is also an open source uh, speech synthesizer, is built on top of HTS. And uh, it works as a screen reader on Windows, Linux, and Android. In fact, uh, recently, actually this year, um, the RH, RH, RH Voice uh, now includes Macedonian as well. So people can use it, uh, use a synthesizer uh, as a screen reader in Macedonian for their desktop or for their mobile phone. Um, and uh, OK, now all the hype is about deep learning. And uh, deep learning has really, really revolutionized speech technology. It has, in fact, allowed uh, speech synthesis to become so good that you cannot recognize it's not artificial. Uh, that is that is it is artificial. Actually, you you think that it's a human, but uh, in fact, it's a speech synthesizer. So there are a lot of packages that support this. All of them uh, free software, open source. Uh, one of the biggest ones. Uh, these are the two biggest ones, I think. Um, Koki AI uh, TTS. This is a successor of Mozilla TTS. Um, it's built on the latest uh, deep learning research and has over twenty pre-trained models. And the other one is the ESPNet, which is an end-to-end -end speech processing toolkit. It also supports speech recognition, and uh, Koki also supports speech recognition, as we'll see in a minute. Uh, besides these two big, big packages, there are a lot of repositories on GitHub where you can uh, try out some of the newest models in speech, in speech synthesis. So for example, Tacotron 2, which was pioneered by Google, is implemented by NVIDIA and uh, available on GitHub. Deep Voice 3 is a, uh, was designed by Baidu, and the Transformer TTS is the, the new big thing now. Uh, Transformers are transforming uh, deep learning uh, recently, so they are both, uh, so they are also now in TTS. Um, okay, so in speech recognition, you also have uh, several paradigms. Uh, the oldest one is template based, where you have a recording of a, of a word and you want to find if the new word is similar to that one. So it's the oldest approach, and it's a bit archaic, a bit archaic, but still might be useful for if you have two commands to recognize, for example, in a in a very simple system. Um, and then you have parametric uh, recognition and also these deep learning end-to-end uh, -end systems. All of them have free software um, uh, deployment deployments available. Um, so the template based is simple enough that um, I even give it as a, a student projects uh, in, my, my, in my classes. Uh, there is a dynamic time warping uh, module in Python that you can use and then uh, it's, uh, it's rather simple to, to use it for, for recognizing uh, words. Uh, in the parametric uh, recognition um, category, uh, here it's uh, HMM toolkit, I, men I mentioned it before, HTK. It's, uh, it was used uh, primarily for speech recognition. I used it for my PhD uh, some, what is it, six years, no, more, seven years from, uh, before, ago. Uh, but uh, it's still active. Uh, it's applied to speech synthesis. We saw in HTS, uh, character recognition, and even DNA sequencing. Um, then uh, CMU Sphinx and Pocket Sphinx, these are not supported anymore. And Julius was, so all of these are based on HTK. Uh, Julius is still active, but um, uh, a bit dated at this point. Um, the big, uh, the big players now in speech recognition from the free software world uh, is uh, is Caldi. The Caldi speech recognition toolkit is a very big uh, toolkit supported by many companies and many research institutes. It has around 400 developers on, on GitHub, and it's uh, ready for commercial use. So it's it's really hardcore. Uh, and it's actively, actively developed with new models and uh, improvements. It's based on uh, weighted finite state transducers instead of H HMMs. Uh, the VOSC speech recognition toolkit, toolkit builds on Caldi. And there are several others that are based on Caldi, but uh, I will just, for brevity, I will, I will not uh, list them all. And uh, the deep learning uh, part uh, in speech recognition, um, uh, here, here are the same two. So Koki, also a successor of Mozilla Project DeepSpeech. It has over 80 pre-trained models for 
more than 50 world languages uh, that are ready to use. Uh, you have ESPNet, uh, you have SpeechBrain, which is a new player still in beta, in beta uh, but uh, it, it seems promising at this, at this stage. And for the speaker recognition, I will list, list these three. So uh, Spear, which is developed by EDUP, it's a speaker recognition toolkit based on Bob, which is also developed by EDUP. Um, this is a bit dated, I think, think 2015 or something, the last updates. Uh, Alize is a French speaker recognition platform. This was active till two years ago, uh, the development, so it's, it's on GitHub. Uh, Bob is also on GitHub, I, I didn't put the link here. And SpeechBrain is something that is uh, up and coming, as, as I mentioned. So with that, I will end this uh, short overview. I hope I was not over my time. Uh, I can't hear you. Excellent, you're just on time and you're helping us to, to, to get back with it. Back in, to be yes. back in track. <laughs> <laughs> Glad to help. Thank you very much for a great presentation. And uh, I will ask for uh, you know, questions if there is any from the audience or online. Yes, my colleague Milanovic. Hi, Bunny. Hey. I have a question. So, uh, actually, three short questions. Uh -huh. So, first one is uh, how uh, these tools that are open source and that are basically locally executed on 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 your machine, compared to cloud services like Google Speech Recognition and uh, and uh, uh, Synthesis uh, in English for, for English language. How mm -hmm. do they compare to commercial releases, for example, available at least for Serbian language that I know of, uh, Alphanum, if you are aware of, from mm -hmm. Professor Delic from uh, Novi Sad. Mm -hmm. And uh, third, what's the maturity for, let's say, Macedonian and Serbian languages, which, which are not that uh, pervasive as, as English? So, thanks, man. Uh, thank you, Lola. That's an excellent question. So, um, in fact, uh, I would say, so most of these um, the, the deep learning ones uh, are based uh, really on, on the latest research that is published by the big players. So in fact, uh, I think even commercially, Google is using uh, the models that it publishes in, at conferences. So it's, it's the same model. Uh, the thing is that Google has uh, a lot of data, but uh, there is a Mozilla project called, uh, called Common Voice in which uh, they collect many different languages and thousands of hours of many different languages. And using this, uh, this uh, database, you can kind of uh, train your models to compete uh, with commercial models. So uh, Caldi, for example, in speech recognition is used in commercial systems the, uh, you know, built by companies, and they also contribute to the, to the code base. Uh, as for the regional context, so um, I, I, I don't know how many of these have a Serbian model. I haven't really looked into it. Um, it, they don't have a Macedonian model, at least I haven't uh, come across one. Uh, I've used them to do uh, some uh, synthesis and recognition for Macedonian, and we have really encouraging results. Uh, in fact, uh, I can share the, the link to the website of, of my group, and uh, you, can, um, you can take a look there and take a listen uh, to, the speech, uh, to the speech samples and uh, and the speech recognition that uh, we have going. Yes, thank you for your answer. I will just put another one. Uh, it is closely related. We had a, a recently we had some projects that is for disabled persons, but that our focus was on eye tracking. However, also we needed a speech uh, generation. Yeah, and besides that, speech to text also. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. But. As I said, it, it was just part of our project, so we used the Google service for, well, for that purpose. It was the fastest one, and they, it gave the brilliant results. I mean, at least for the speech to text, even for Serbian. Uh -huh. What is the, the, the best guess for you? Which one should we try if we want to? Among, uh, thank you for your exhaustive list of the of the tools. Um, yeah. so, so, uh, from your own experience, what is the one that you would choose? 
uh, for speech to text or text to speech? Yes, yes, uh, speech to text. So speech to text, uh, I would uh, I would go with Kaldi. I think Kaldi is uh, really mature, and uh, oh, sharing screen. I'm trying to share my screen, but okay, never mind. So Kaldi is really mature. I would go with Kaldi. Um, recently, we're working on assistive communication ourselves. So the students at the, the faculty here developed uh, Govorko, which is an assistive communication uh, application for Android. It's uh, it's in on the Play Store, and uh, now we are collaborating with uh, uh, Open the Windows, which is an association for assistive technology, in a project which is funded by UNICEF, where we are um, localizing Seaboard, which is kind of UNICEF's um, assistive uh, communication uh, platform so within this project we are also planning to develop some um, um, low resource basically uh, speech synthesis that will work on uh, smartphones thank you and we have one more question from the audience however would you like me to repeat the question or you will uh, just just step down to the mic No, we cannot catch that on that distance. Well, I cannot hear this. It's basic, but you know, we in psychology, we are very interested in uh, in analyzing uh, language output, so-called spontaneous verbal behavior. And I'm very curious, uh, so what is the output of your analysis? You have this uh, speech analyzing software, and after analysis, uh, uh, how the output looks like. Can you have it all the text that is pronounced by some people? Is it containing some word processor or something like that? Or in the written form or something like that? What is the output actually of this analysis? Mm -hmm. So you're interested more in uh, things outside of the text, right? As a yeah. psychology then, you know, you can use only the written text and analyze uh, a language where we classify it in various categories and then we, uh, we infer something about psychological states and things like that. Mm -hmm. So what we need actually, you know, whenever we analyze uh, some uh, text, uh, uh, for instance, from these recording devices, we have to uh, put it into some uh, uh, word processor yeah? and, uh -huh. and then analyze it. Uh, can I have, for instance, this uh, software for uh, speech analysis and then immediately have output in written form and then analyze it? Yes. 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 Exactly. You can have this. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So this is the. And uh, can you recommend some uh, uh, software, commercial software in Serbian? So for speech recognition, as uh, uh, Milos, Milos, yes, yes, yes. Okay. As Milos said, uh, uh, Google has a really good support for Macedonia. So I guess for Serbian as well. Uh, I think Alphanum has some commercial products that do uh, speech recognition for Serbian. Uh, so you can check with that. Uh, uh -huh. Others, others for Serbian, I don't know. Possibly there are, but you have to maybe. You can follow the links I have here on the presentation and uh, try if they have a Serbian language. Sorry, probably it was a rudimentary okay. question, and everyone right. knows that. It's an excellent, no, it's a, it's an excellent uh, question because, in fact, there is a whole field of speech research where they analyze uh, the uh, the paralinguistics of speech. So basically. Uh, prosody, voice uh, quality, and they try to detect uh, Alzheimer, for example, depression uh, from the way people speak. So it's very, very a hot topic in, in research. Thank you. Thank you very much. Once again, thank you for a round of applause for our friend, Professor Gerasov. Next time, uh, see you in Belgrade. I we really hope, hope to see you. Hope, to see you. <laughs> hope you finish paper till the time. <laughs> <laughs> uh.